New Zealand is an island country of four and a half million people. It's a land of hillsides dotted with sheep and cows. Here with us we have 29,000 sheep and about 2,400 cattle. So on this farm there's just under 4,000 ewes and just under 400 cows running on it. We've only got four million people and we've probably got twice as many cows as we do people in a little, little country. The farming every day is different, there's always a new challenge and lots of different aspects to it. Agriculture is thriving in New Zealand, but this wasn't always the case. 30 years ago, a government program of farming subsidies had grown out of control and it resulted in farming practices that harmed the land and animals. Farmers, along with the rest of the country, voted to end all farming subsidies as long as they were allowed to trade internationally in an open market. The elimination of subsidies reduced significant income for some farmers. But opening international trade meant they could buy farming equipment and supplies for less money. It was a difficult change, but today New Zealand is considered a world leader in productive, sustainable and ethical farm practices. With an unstoppable drive, New Zealanders confronted their problems head on. Today, they've turned their country around, setting an example for the rest of the world for growth, sustainability and freedom. I'm Joan Norberg and I'm here to share that story with you. The economic reforms of 1984 are now more than a generation old. Today, young people are choosing agriculture as a viable, fun and high-tech career. They've learned how to make a living while caring for the environment as well. I'm Glenn from the Nature Matters Milk Company and we have a little herd of uh, 20 cows and we sell our whole milk to cafes and direct to the public. Previously, all dairy products had to be distributed through a single entity called the New Zealand Dairy Board. Deregulation in the industry now allows farmers to sell directly to their customers. But the size of New Zealand is equal to that of Colorado, so maintaining the pristine beauty of their land is of great importance to New Zealanders. Cows have an environmental impact on our waterways and it's quite a big issue in New Zealand about um, our, our dairy industry which is expanding and the effects that it's having on our environment. So we've really gone out there looking to find how to produce milk sustainably. Part of Glenn's business plan was not only to sell milk that tasted better than the competition, but also make it clear to consumers that his cows were not harming the land. Cows have an environmental impact because you've got a high density of cows on one bit of land and essentially the cow's urine that is causing the environmental impact. When concentrated in pastures, cow urine harms grasses and pollutes groundwater. Nitrate leaching is a big issue in New Zealand and that's essentially where a cow urinates on the ground and there's so much nitrogen in that urine that the plants within that urine patch can't absorb it all up. So the, the nitrate or nitrogen ends up flowing through the soil profile and it gets into our groundwater. So the more cows you have on a smaller block of land, the more urine patches and the higher density of, of nitrogen. We've really gone out there looking to find how to farm cows without affecting the environment. So by spreading our cows out in a less intensive manner over multiple blocks of land throughout the year, you know, we drop our environmental impact you know, by, by about 70%. While it's possible to spread cows out over more acreage, the cows still need to be brought in and milked. And there isn't a milking barn on every field. So Glenn came up with a novel idea.
Instead of bringing the cows to the milking machine, why not bring the milking machine to the cows? There weren't any mobile milking machines on the market, so Glenn invented one. So we've developed a, uh, a mobile milking system. It's a, it's a trailer that allows us to milk our cows in, in the field or the paddock, and uh, we process our milk, pasteurise it in the paddock as well, and we bottle it and then deliver it into, into town. Glenn also needed to make sure that it complied with New Zealand's health and dairy regulations. Uh, well, one of the biggest problems I faced uh, setting up the, the mobile unit was uh, complying with the Ministry for Primary Industries regulations. It took Glenn more than a year and most of his savings to get the mobile milking system up and running. It was a leap of faith really spending sort of $100,000, $200,000 on something that we didn't really know whether the regulators were going to take a really hard approach on us or not. In the end, they, it did take six months, but we finally we got it through. Once Glenn's system was approved, he could sell to his local customers who appreciate his all-natural and local product. All we do with our milk is, uh, is pasteurise it, which is heat it to 68 degrees and, and cool it back down again. Literally all the milk in the supermarkets has been homogenised and standardised. That does change the taste and the structure of the milk. I suppose we like to say that um, our milk's like roast chicken and supermarket milk's a bit like a chicken nugget. We really like Glenn's milk, uh, it's, it's as local as it can be, with uh, the delivery guy being the guy who's actually milked the cows. I mean, this, this is a story that um, our customers are able to engage with. They see, they see them arriving every day. Our customers love it. You know, there is actually a living to be made from a local farmer producing their local product to their local communities, and you know, I think that uh, Providing something that other people can, can use to better their lives is, I suppose, the main thing. Matt and Kushla Smith are a farming couple building their own future. And six months ago, they bought their own dairy farm. So we have on this farm, we have 197 cows that we're currently milking and we have 150 calves that we've just carved this spring. In previous generations, many dairy farmers ran their business intuitively, determining grazing and feeding patterns, herd size and breeding, all by experience. But Matt and Kushla employ new technologies to monitor almost every aspect of the farm including remote data gathering to determine how grazing is impacting their pastures. So I currently use a plate meter for measuring the grass on the farm and, and um, it's an electronic device and it is a rising plate meter so it goes up and down with the levels of grass. And then that information is uploaded using a cell phone that synchronizes through to the computer so that the data is there Kush can see it at home, she can print out a report for me. Um, so it's there when I get home and then um, go through and do a feed budget for the, the cows on farm. They also remotely enter and track data for each cow in the herd. And so at any stage Matt can look up um, the age of an animal, when she calved, when her mating was. Um, Wherever so I am on the farm I can look up that information. Using this hard data, Matt and Kushla can create a range of forward-looking scenarios and weigh their options. Shall we send these cows off now or shall we keep milking them through or shall we rear extra calves instead of sending milk? Um, and so we sit down and run the figures on them together. Whether we should be bringing more feed in or cutting back on feed or cutting back on stock numbers, so we just keep analysing our business and just yeah, keep trying to do the best. For us and best for the farm. Part of their goal is to make a decent profit without having to increase the size of the farm. We've sort of 
gone through larger farms. We've been on farms with sort of 500 cows and it's a lot more management of staff, whereas Matt would rather be in the shed dealing with the cows than having to be office-based and dealing with staff. And that's what excites us now is to get the most production per cow because you can still be profitable on a small-scale farm rather than requiring a 1,000 cows to do it. With the real-time data that they gather, Matt and Kushla are able to run a nimble operation, making decisions based on their cow's productivity, as well as the constantly changing price of milk in world markets. For Matt and Kushla, part of farming's attraction is the autonomy it provides them. Using modern tools, they can balance the agricultural and business sides of the farm, making their own decisions about how they make their living. In New Zealand, since the reforms, farmers have just only got stronger and wiser. 